So sorry for that to those who wasn't able to uh, watch this one since I'm pretty sure that um, some of your uh, classmates uh, will uh, watch the recorded uh, Zoom meeting. So let's just go back again, okay? Uh, real quick, okay? So in here, uh, uh, here's the uh, slide one and then the definition of the key, uh, Kirchhoff's law, okay? We're in uh, the main definition why we have this law right here is for us to be able to solve a more complex circuit problems, okay? Like for example, the bridge resistor circuit and then the T networks. Second one is the man who found out or developed this law. So his name is Gustav Kirchhoff. So he is a German physicist. So he was able to develop this one uh, way back 1845. Okay. And then this law right here is divided into two. We have the KCL and then the KVL. KCL is for the Kirchhoff's current law and then KVL is for uh, voltage uh, law. Okay. And for the uh, KCL, so we just have a simple rule right here. So the total current or charge entering a junction or node is exactly equal to the charge uh, leaving the node as it has no other place to go except to leave as no charge is lost within the node. So just like what I mentioned a while ago, so if we have a current of say one ampere right here, upon passing through a node, it is still one ampere right here, but uh, this one is not applicable uh, with a uh, parallel since uh, this one up will be divided into two since this is a parallel. However, if this is a car, I mean uh, a series circuit, so let's make this one a series circuit. Okay, there you go. So we just have a one loop. Okay, so whatever is your current right here upon passing through this node, it is still one um right here. Okay. Because there is no other way that you know uh, that a current will go to. Okay, so that's the uh, rule when it comes to uh, KCL. Okay, and then for this one, here's the uh, equation when it comes to uh, KCL. So we just have a simple rule: if it's entering a node, we have a positive sign. If it's leaving a node, then we have a negative sign. Okay, so that is why if you are going to take a look on this one, so we have let's say uh, your uh, one ump right here. So that's entering, so that's positive one ampere, okay? And then we have uh, an, a current that is uh, leaving this one. So this one is now equal to or minus uh, one, okay, or one amp. And then equate that one to zero. So one minus one is equal to zero. So zero is equal to zero, okay? Or if you want, you can transpose this one on the other side. So one is equal to one, okay? So that's basically the rule of the KCL. All right, so uh, more explanations when it comes to the KCL. So here's the initial equation wherein we have a positive sign, but of course you have to negate those living uh, currents. And then here's now the uh, simplified version of that one. Okay, so positive, 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 and then two negatives. All right, and then here's the definition of a node. So a node is just basically a function, I mean junction. Okay, so this is a node, 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 and so on and so forth, okay? And we now have the uh, second law, which is the uh, KVL or the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So KVL or uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, so uh, this is the definition, okay, or the rule itself of this one. So in any closed loop network, the total voltage around the loop is equal to the sum of all the voltage drops within the same loop, which is also equal to zero, okay? So meaning, Meaning, let me just get this one. So if we have, let's say, let's make this one as a voltage source. So if we have, uh, let's say, T volts okay, as our voltage source, and then we have one amp. Uh, yeah, let's say uh, we have one ohm right here, and then one ohm, okay, and then one ohm. Okay, so if you're going to add those, you'll get a total current of one ampere, okay? So in here, we have a voltage drop. As you guys can see, if you're going to solve this one, we have a voltage drop of one volt. Okay, we have another voltage drop of one volt. And then we have a voltage drop of one volt. So as it goes back right here, it is now equal to zero. Okay, so that's why if you're going to add those three, one volt, one volt, one volt, it is equal to your mean source of voltage. Okay, so there is no way that, uh, like for example, uh, you have a uh, one volt here and then uh, 0 0.5, let's say we have 0 0.5 
volts right here and then 0 0.5 volts right here okay because this is already wrong because if you're going to add those you now have a total of two volts okay so there is no other way that uh, you'll get a voltage drop of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 right here so uh, all of the uh, voltages i mean uh, all of the uh, voltage drops okay if you're going to sum it up it is equal to your uh, original value of your voltage source okay so that's basically it when it comes to uh, KVL, okay? So for you to be able to understand this one, so let's have this equation. So VAB plus VBC plus VCD plus VDA is equal to zero. So all you need to do is get the sum of, summation of all of those uh, voltages and then equate that one to zero, okay? That's how simple it is. All right, so for you to be able to appreciate this uh, equation right here and then this equation right here. So let's have an actual uh, example later on, okay? But before that, uh, there's one more thing that you guys need to consider, okay? When it comes to solving a, uh, let's say, Kirchhoff's law, okay? Especially in KVL. So in here, you can actually have a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. So in here, the one that we have in here is the clockwise uh, rotation. But you can also have the other way around, the anti-clockwise or the counter-clockwise, okay? So it's just that uh, if your uh, assumption of your rotation is correct, then you will get a result of positive, okay? That's always the case if you have the correct assumption of uh, rotation. However, if you've got the, uh, the other way around, the uh, incorrect uh, rotation. So your answer is still correct. However, you will get a negative result. Okay. So if that happened, just make your uh, result positive and then uh, reverse the uh, rotation of your uh, first assumption. Okay. So from this into this. Okay. But if your first assumption is correct, then no need to change the uh, polarity. Okay, or, or the uh, sign of your uh, result. Okay, because it will give you the same result. Okay, clockwise or anti-clockwise. All right, so we have here the uh, clockwise. We call that one actually, uh, we actually call that one conventional current. Okay, that's the uh, technical uh, term for that one. Okay, from left to right. And then we have the other way around, which is the anti-clockwise or the counter-clockwise. We call this one electron current. Okay. Because uh, uh, our current is flowing from the negative going back to the uh, positive. So that's the reason why we call it one electron current. Okay. But nevertheless, let's say this is the uh, negative way and then this is the positive way. Okay. So are we clear so far regarding with the uh, two types of flow of current? Yes, sir. How about the others? So were you guys able to follow so far? Am I too fast or just fine? So too long, sir. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm, uh, you know, uh, doing this one a little bit fast since we have to finish uh, two modules. Okay. And then I hope we can, we can only have uh, three meetings, part one, part two, and part three. But if it's not enough, then we'll be having a part four. Okay. Anyway, so let's now move on to the uh, terminologies, okay, when it comes to solving a uh, Kirchhoff circuit law. So we have here the node, which we have already discussed a while ago, and then the path. I hope you guys are already familiar with path. Path is just a line, okay? And then branches. So this might be new to you guys. And then loop. So this might be also new to you. And then meshes, okay? So these terms are uh, used frequently in uh, circuit analysis, so it is important to understand them. So here are the definitions of those terminologies. So circuit, we have already discussed that one, but uh, we're already done with this one. So it's just a line or a single line. No, we are also done with this one, but for branch. So a branch is a single or group of components such as resistors or uh, a source of uh, which are connected between two nodes. So for you to be able to uh, have a branch, so it must have a component between the two nodes. Okay, so later on we'll have a uh, diagram for this one. And then a loop is just a simple closed path. So if there's a path that, you know, will lead you from the start up to the end and then 
it leads back to the uh, starting point. We call that one loop. Okay, so in a series circuit, so of course we only have one loop, just like this one. Okay, loop number one. If we have another circuit right here, let's say another resistor, then we have another uh, loop right here, which is now called the second loop or loop number two. Okay, so that's it for the loop. Uh, for the mesh, so this one is kind of similar with the loop, okay, but a mesh is a single closed loop series path that's uh, that does not contain any other paths. So there are no loops inside the mesh. So let me just uh, give you a real quick example comparing a loop versus a mesh. So let's have uh, this as circuit. Oops. Let's have this circuit right here. Let's say this is your voltage source. Uh, this is your resistor. And then another resistor right here. So just a typical circuit, okay, parallel circuit. So I did mention a while ago that this is your first loop, this is your second loop, but you can also have a loop on the outside, okay? So that is also possible. So all in all, we have three loops, okay? So uh, for the mesh, we can actually also call this one as a mesh. Well, that is actually the uh, correct definition if it doesn't have a loop inside. Okay, so this is your first loop and then your first mesh also. Okay, so I'll call this one L and then M. So a loop and then a mesh at the same time. So this is your second loop. This is also your uh, uh, loop. And then this is also your uh, mesh at the same time. Okay, but for the third one, so let's say we call this one your third loop. This is just a loop, okay? We cannot call this one a mesh, okay? We cannot call that one a mesh because it contains another loop, okay, inside of it. So in this third loop, okay, it contains this first loop and then second loop. So if you're going to take a look on the meaning of the mesh, so it is a single closed loop series, okay? So uh, for this one, we cannot call you cannot call the third loop as a mesh, okay? You can only call the uh, first loop and then second loop as a mesh. But uh, the third one, uh, not a mesh, just a loop, okay? So are we clear with this one so far when it comes to loop versus mesh? All right, yes, so uh, I hope uh, you guys won't get confused when it comes to definition of loop versus a mesh. Okay, so here's a diagram when it comes to branch. So we have the uh, node right here and then another, another node right here and then it has a component inside then we can call this one as a branch, okay? But in here we have a node, we have another node but it doesn't have a component between it so we cannot call this one as a branch, okay? So we can only call it as a branch if it's between or if, if there is a component between that uh, two nodes. Like for example, this one, another node, another node and then it has a component inside of it and that is also a branch. Okay, so this is also a branch. This is also a branch. But uh, for this one, this is not a branch. Okay, the same with this one. This is not a branch. This is not also a branch. Okay, this is not also a branch. Okay, so are we clear so far regarding with branch? So it's very straightforward. So I, I guess uh, you'll be able to understand this one uh, real quick. So clear or no? when it comes to branch. What about the others? All right. So two out of 12. Okay, so I, I hope the others are also were able to get this one when it comes to branch. So here's more explanations when it comes to node and then a branch. Okay, so this is a branch, AE, okay, or EA. Uh, a, B is also a branch, okay, from A going to B. Uh, B, D is also a branch, okay, B going to D, okay. So you can also have two components, actually, okay, as long as it has a components inside of that uh, or between that uh, nodes, okay, B going to D, okay, so it passed through these two ohms and then four ohms, so that's, that's uh, also considered as a branch, okay, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's take note this one. This is not a branch, ED, okay, because it doesn't have a component between it. And then for the loop, so we have here AB, 
C, D, and then A. So this is the loop. Uh, let, we could say that this is your loop one. You can we can actually have a loop right here, another loop right here, and then another loop right here, and then another, another loop for the outside part. Okay, so those are the loops. So question, how many loops uh, we can uh, form in here in this given circuit? Is it three? Is it four? Is it five? Is it six? How many loops? Six, sir. Six? Who says six? How about five? How about four? Four, sir. Oh, what about the others? So six, four. Ayon, finally. So the correct answer is five. Okay. So if you guys are going to take a look on this one. Oops, what happened? So you can have a loop right here. First loop, second loop, third loop, fourth loop, and then fifth loop on the outer side. Okay, so that's why we have five loops. How about mesh? How many mesh do we have in here? Hello, hello. How many mesh? So we have five loops in total. But how about mesh? How many? So the correct answer is four. So very obvious. As long as it doesn't have a path inside it or another, you know, a closed loop path, then that is already a mesh. So this is one mesh, another mesh, another mesh, and then another mesh. So all in all, we have four meshes. But for this one, we cannot consider this one as a mesh because it contains those loops right here. Okay. Okay, so that's it for the uh, definition of uh, another definition for branches and then loops, okay? So just note that components are said to be connected together in series if they have the same current, okay? But for the other one, uh, you could say that uh, they are in parallel if they have the same voltage applied across them, okay? So uh, again, just reminding you guys uh, the basic rules uh, of electrical circuit, the Ohm's law. okay? So another uh, example of typical circuit, okay, so loop, another loop, another loop right here. So your uh, nodes, and then uh, a branch right here, another branch, another branch, another branch, another branch, and then another branch, okay? So let's have a uh, example, okay, with this one. Uh, but before that, since we don't have enough time anymore, so we will just continue this example on the part two, okay? So goodbye for now and see you guys later. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, yes, okay. Goodbye. Continue our discussion. Okay, so can you guys see my screen now? Yes, sir. All right, let me just maximize this one. Okay, so let's have this example right here. So our main goal is to find the current flowing in the 40 ohm resistor R3, okay, right here. So uh, we can already identify the I1 and then the I2, but what about the I3, okay? Because we have two voltage sources right here, where in, if, you're go if you guys are going to take, uh, take a look on this one, we have a current that will flow right here, okay? And then another current that, that will flow right here. Uh, so if you're going to take a look on this one, so we could say that I1 plus I2 is your uh, I3 right here, okay? So that's basically, uh, you know, our first uh, assessment regarding with this uh, rotations of our loopings right here, okay? Okay, so let's have this uh, solution. But before that, okay, we are going to have our own solution, okay? Because you might not be able to understand some of the uh, solutions in there. Okay, so with this one, our first uh, thing that we need to do Okay, is the KCL, okay, find the KCL equation, 
okay? So you can actually have a KCL on this node or you can have the KCL on this node. But mostly, we always deal with uh, the KCL on the superimposed node. Uh, in superimposed, super node, okay? Not superimposed. We always uh, try to find uh, the super node, okay? So this is a node, this is a node, this is also a node, and then this is also a node. But when we say super node, uh, that node is the uh, main, uh, you know, a node that every current that will flow into. Okay, so you can actually consider this one as a super uh, node also, but we will just deal uh, with one because uh, even uh, either of those two, okay, even even you consider this one still the same, even though you consider this one, it's still the same. Okay, so let's just deal with one uh, super node. Okay, let's say super node A. Okay, so if you guys are going to take a look at this one, this node, we have a, a node entering I1 and then we have another node entering I2. Okay, which is this one, and then which is this one, okay? And then we have another current, of course, that will leave that node, which is now the I3, okay? Which is now this one right here, okay? So uh, again, going back to our KCL, so when we see entering, it is positive, okay? So I1 is positive, the same with I2, okay? But if it's leaving like the I, uh, I3, then that should be negative. And then after that, equate that one to zero. Okay. So did you guys get this one so far? I1 plus I2 minus I3. Hello, hello. Is it, are we clear so far with this I1 plus I2 minus I3? Yes, sir. So uh, I'm just checking because this, this is a very crucial uh, explanation because if you won't be able to understand this example number one, then there is no way that you'll be able to understand the uh, following examples, okay? So in this one, in this uh, equation, let's see, uh, this is our equation number one, okay? We can actually come up with a simplified version of this one wherein we can transpose this negative I3 on the other side, okay? So we could have I1, plus I2 is equal to I3 instead, just to eliminate that uh, zero right here, okay? Or you can have the I3 is equal to I1 plus I2, okay? So this is now our official equation number one, okay? So let me just highlight this one because this is the one that we will use uh, later on. So after KCL, then we can now apply KBL, okay? So remember that in KBL, so as it passed through a certain, uh, say, load or resistor, you'll get a voltage drop, okay? So knowing that it will give you a voltage drop, okay? So those should be, or yeah, those, those, those are resistors should have a label of negative sign. So how do we do that? So uh, you can come up with uh, this kind of uh, scenario. So this one is negative, of course, and then this side of your voltage source is positive, okay? And then in here, we have here positive and then negative. So later on, I will explain why we have positive and negative, not negative and then positive. So the same with this uh, resistor right here, we have positive and then negative, okay? So if you guys are going to take a look on this, uh, uh, let's see, loop one right here. Let me just isolate this one for now to avoid confusion. Okay, so let's just have a series connection, okay? So we only have one loop, okay? And then you'll get, you'll have a voltage drop right here and then another voltage drop. And then as soon as you go back right here, if you're going to sum up those two voltage drop, you'll get uh, 10 volts, okay? So that's basically the idea when it comes to KVL, okay? So to have a KVL, so, First is the uh, voltage uh, source first, which is 10 volts, okay? So uh, I, I will get the uh, sign, okay, or the polarity, okay, or the, uh, what do you call this one? Yeah, sign, okay. This positive sign right here. So the outer part of this component. So I will get positive 10 volts, okay? Followed by, okay, this voltage drop on the R1. 
So how do we get the voltage drop on the R1? So going back to our equation, so we have V1 is equal to I1 times R1. Okay, so that's basically uh, the uh, equation that we're going to use and how to get the voltage drop on the R1. So uh, in here, since we know that we're going to have the voltage drop, so it will not be added to our voltage source. Instead, it will be deducted to our voltage source. Okay, so that is why we have to consider the outer part. So if you're considering the outer part, then you have to stick with the outer part. If you're going to consider the um, uh, entering part, this one right here, the negative, then you have to stick with the entering part. So either of those two, you will get the same answer, okay, uh, as long as you're consistent, okay. So in here, I, I, I always use the outer uh, sign on how to, uh, you know, finalize my signage. So in here, we have positive 10 volts. And then in here, we have negative uh, I1 times R1, okay, since we are getting the voltage drop across R1, followed by the uh, R2 right here which is now the I3. So we will have negative, okay, so positive and the negative, I'll consider the outer uh, sign, negative I3 times R2, so uh, I3 rather, since this is uh, resistor 3, okay? And then after that, going back to our voltage source, original voltage source, just equate this one to zero, okay? So this is now our equation number This equation number two came from loop number one. So are, are we clear so far on how did we get this equation right here? So basically we could call this one KVL. Let me just remove this one. KVL at loop number one. Okay, this equation right here. So were you guys able to follow so far on how did we get this equation? Okay, what about the others? So let me know if you are confused. So this is a very crucial example. So again, if you will not be able to get this one right now, then there is no way that you'll be able to get the following examples. So we have three more examples later on. So please let me know if uh, there's a part that you wasn't able to understand, okay? So this is now our loop number one, and we can now uh, replace our variables wherein, let's say, R1 is 10 and then R3 is 40 ohms, okay? So we have 10 volts minus I1, okay? R1 is 10 ohms, so I1 times 10 minus I3, and then R3 is 40 ohms, equal to zero, okay? So this is now our updated equation number two. So we can keep that one as it is already, then we can now proceed to KVL at loop number two, okay? So in here, of course, we are now going to consider the right side equation. So still the same, we have to label the uh, polarity. So we have to consider this uh, polarity right here. So negative, positive. So the flow of current is from here to there. So of course, uh, as it passes through this resistor right here, it will give you a voltage drop. So I will put here the positive and then negative right here. And then another positive and then negative right here. Okay. And then as it goes back right here, just equate that one to zero. So again, I always consider the uh, leaving part or leaving uh, sign. So we have here positive 20 volts. Okay. Then of course, it's now minus since we have a voltage drop on the R2. Uh, R2. So uh, this one will become I2 times R2. Okay. Or we can already write the value of R2. Where in the value of R2 is 20 ohms. Okay followed by the uh, other voltage drop on the R3. So minus I2 times R3 is 40 ohms equal to zero, okay? So this is now our equation number three, okay? So 
were you guys able to follow so far? And how did we get the equation number 3? So KVL at loop 2. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so let me guys ask you one by one. So let me know if you guys really were able to get this one. Mr. Carlo, are you there? Yes, sir. So were you able to follow up to this point, this third equation? Okay. Okay, so at least it's an honest answer. How about Mr. Francis? Ini intent di kepala saya. Okay, Mr. Maaba. Maybe he's not around, Mr. Nathaniel. Nah, analyze pun sir. Okay, how about you, Miss Lia? Ina analyze pun pun sir. Okay, Mr. Jason. Analyze pun pun. Okay, Mr. Sajin. Na-analyze din po, sir. Okay, Mr. Isagani. Mr. Isagani. Okay, maybe he's not also around. Ah, okay. So, gets niya. Yata, I think. Okay. How about you, Mr. Aaron? Uh, same here, sir. Na-analyze din. Okay, Miss Grace. Still analyzing, sir. Okay, Miss Sophia. Inalyze po, sir. Okay, Mr. Cameron. Sure, analyze po po. Okay. So, uh, to make it quick, just give me a thumbs up if you guys were able to get this part. So, let's start with the KCL. So, give me a real quick thumbs up. Five, four, three, two, one. So, dalawa, tatlo, apat. So, apat lang yung nakagets for this equation number one on how did we get this one. Lima, I guess. Okay, so maybe at least half of you guys were able to get this one. How about loop number one? Okay, or equation number two. On how did we get this uh, equation number two? So, one... 1 only. Dalawa. Okay. So, hindi na ako magtatanong sa loop 2. Uh, I think si Mr. Isagani lang yung nakakuha na ito. Anyway, so let's start with the equation number 1. Okay, so let's start from the scratch. So, let me get this one again. So that you guys will be able to get this one uh, you know, fully, fully understand uh, everything. Okay, so again, when it comes to KCL, okay, uh, we try to find, we always try to find the super node. Okay, when we say super node, it is a part where in most of our uh, components uh, are connected with. So in here, this node right here is connected with this R1, it's connected with R2, and then the R3. And then the rest, so uh, most of them are, just have two uh, components uh, on this uh, path and then this path. But for this one, it has uh, three branch to be exact, okay? So the more branch that it, uh, that node is connected, then that's uh, the more reason why you call that one super node, okay? And then the rest are just normal uh, nodes. So we could say KCL at loop A. So again, if it's entering, okay, if it's entering a node, that's positive, okay? But if it's leaving a node, then that's already negative. Okay, that's the signage, uh, signage that you guys have to follow when it comes to forming an equation when it comes to KCL. So KCL at loop A, as you guys can see, we have I1 entering, I2 entering. So that's why we have I1 is positive, and then I2 is also positive. But for this one, so it's now leaving our node A. So that's the reason why we have put here negative I3. 
Then after that, just equate everything to zero. And then from here, you can transpose this one on the other side, wherein it will give you this equation. I3 is equal to I1 plus I2. Okay? So this is now our equation. Why is it lagging? Equation number one. Okay? So I hope you guys were able to get this one. So let's now move on to the KVL at loop one. So where is our loop one? So here's our loop one. So the second thing that you guys need to do is label, okay, or put the uh, signages, okay, of our uh, components. So we have here the negative and then positive, okay? And then we have here positive and then negative. So let me just explain, uh, just in case that you guys were able to uh, made the incorrect uh, signage, let's say negative and then positive. So right here, as you guys can see, if we are going to follow the outer uh, signage, we will get positive 10 volts. Positive 10 volts, okay? And then at the same time, we will also get positive I1 times R1. So remember, you know, as our voltage uh, source will pass through a load or a resistor to give us a voltage drop. But in here, the one that is happening, it's like, you know, we have another voltage source right here wherein they are being added with each other. Okay, so we could not say that this is a voltage drop anymore since it has a sign of positive. So that's the reason why the correct uh, uh, polarity with this one, right here. So the correct polarity with this one or the signage for this one we so this one must be positive and then negative on the other side okay so the same with the uh, r3 positive and the negative because we must have a, a negative uh, signage uh, after passing through a certain uh, load or resistor okay so in here we have positive 10 volts minus Okay, I1 times R1 because this is a voltage drop. And then another voltage drop right here. Minus I2, uh, I1, and then I3 equal to zero. So when it comes to, you know, uh, dealing with uh, loops, especially in KVL. So we just consider this uh, one loop right here. So that's why uh, I separated this one a while ago on the other side. Okay, so you can just focus with the left side part, uh, left side part, okay? Instead of, you know, uh, looking at both uh, uh, loops, okay? So just focus on loop one since you're dealing only with loop one. And then in here you can now, you can now substitute the uh, given values. So we don't know the value of I1, so just leave it as I1. And then R1 is 10 minus I1, and then R3 is 40, then equal to zero. So this is now your final equation number two, since we cannot do any uh, sim any simplifications uh, with this one anymore. Okay, so uh, I hope you guys were able to get this one now. So just give me a thumbs up if you guys were able to get the equation uh, on loop number one. Okay, so at least there's now three, I guess. One, two, three, or four. Okay, so that's it for the equation number two. So just leave it as it is for now. So let's now move on to KVL. Okay, at loop number two. Okay, this one now on the right side. So we have here, uh, again, the negative and then positive. Positive, negative. Positive, negative. So in here, we have positive 20 volts followed by the voltage drop on the R2. So I uh, minus uh, I2 times R2. And then minus, okay, since we're dealing with the uh, outer uh, signage, minus I2 times R3, okay, equal to zero. So after that, you can now substitute the uh, given values of your R2 and R3. So 20 minus I2 times 20 
minus I2. Oops, my bad. This is not I2. This is I3. Okay, because we have the uh, I3 right here. But for this one, yeah, I1 and then I3. And then this one, I2 and I3. So this one is I, yeah, I3. And then I3 and then R3. So this is 40 ohms equal to 0. And equation number 3. Okay. So were you guys able to follow with this equation number 3? Hello, hello. So how many of you now were able to get this one? Hmm. Dalawa pa din. Tatlo. So at least there's now three. Before, there were only two. Okay. <laughs> so we have an additional one. So I hope uh, the others were now uh, at least able to get uh, at least 70 to 80 percent okay on how did we get this equation number three but anyway so uh after getting the kcl equation kvl and loop one and loop two so you now have a total of three equations okay so the thing that you guys need to do is you know try to find the uh, value of your uh, i1 and your i2 and then i3 okay once you were able to get that one then you can now find the voltage drop on the r2 voltage drop on r3 on the r1 etc etc okay so our goal in this one is find the current flowing on the 40 ohm resistor so we should be able to find the value of the i3 right here okay so in order to do that one so we have to use this uh, uh equation number one right here so in here we have to know the value of your i1 and then the value of i2 so once we uh learn the value of those um currents then we can now solve for the value of i3 okay so in here we can actually use this equation number three and number two, uh, for us to be able to solve one uh, variable, okay? But before we can do that, if you guys are going to take a look on our missing variables, so for the equation number two, we have the I1. Oops. Ah, my bad. So this is not I1, <laughs> okay? So this is I3, okay? Because we have the current on this uh, RT right here, okay? So this is the I1, and then this is the uh, I3. So let me just change this one, okay, into I3. Okay, so in the equation number two, we have two missing unknowns, the I1 and then the I3. And then for the uh, equation number three, we have uh, two unknowns also, which is the I2 and then the I3, okay? So, uh, you know, just by getting those two equations, we now have a total of three unknown variables, okay? But we can eliminate that one into two, just by substituting the value of this I3 right here onto our uh, equation number two or equation number three. So let's say we have to substitute or uh, replace the uh, I3 into this uh, new equation I1 plus I2. So from equation number one to equation number two. Okay, so we're going to use this one as our value of our I3. So 10 minus I1 times 10 minus, so our I3 is equal to I1 plus I2. So we're going to use, it, uh, use that one, minus I1 plus I2 times 40, okay, equal to zero. So were you guys able to get on how did we get this equation right here? So we've just simply replaced the value of this I3 into I1 plus I2, okay? So with that, we can now have two unknowns, okay? Which is the uh, I1 and I2. So uh, after uh, replacing this uh, I3 also, we're going to have two unknowns in total, okay? So before, we have three unknowns, uh, but after uh, substituting the value of equation number one into uh, equation number two and equation number three, we can now have uh, two unknowns only, okay? So all you need to do, is 
uh, eliminate uh, or lessen the unknowns, okay? For you to be able to get the, uh, say, one unknown into into a second unknown and then up to the third unknown, okay? So we have to do that one, one by one, okay? So uh, in here, we can simplify this one a little bit more into 10 minus I1 times 10 minus I1 times 40, okay? Minus I2 times 40 is equal to zero. So just add or, yeah, combine similar uh, units. So 10 minus, so minus I1, and then we have minus I1 here. So 10 minus 40 or my negative 10 minus 40 is negative 50. I1 times 50 minus I2 times 40 is equal to zero. And then you can now say that this is your equation number four. Okay, the newly formed equation number uh, two. Okay, so do the same thing on the equation uh, number three. So equation number one going to equation number three. Okay, so we have 20 minus I2 times 20 minus, so our I3 is I1 plus I2. I1, so minus I1 plus I2 times 40 is equal to zero. Okay, and then uh, just simplify this one a little bit more. So this one will become 20 minus I2 times 20 minus I1 times 40 minus I2 times 40 is equal to zero. So this one will become 20 minus, so we have two I2, so uh, 20 plus 40. So I2 times 20, uh, 60. 20 plus 40 is 60. And then minus I1 times, uh, what is this? 40. I almost uh, thought that uh, that was 10. Okay. So sorry for my, uh, you know, ugly handwritten since I'm only using my mouse. Equal to zero. So from here, we can just, we could now say that this is your equation number five. Okay. So were you guys able to follow up to this point? So for the equation number four, I just simply replace the I3 into I1 plus I2, okay, right here. And then just simplify and then combine two similar units. And then you will get this one as your final equation for number four. The same with the uh, equation number five. So I just simply get the equation number three, okay, oops, equation number one. And then replace the uh, I3 into I1 plus I2. Okay, and then you will get this one as your uh, new equation. So you could say that this is your um, equation number five. So from here, we can now actually use this equation number four and five to eliminate one of the variables. Okay, so the one that we're going to use right here is called the simultaneous, simultaneous equation process. Okay. So from here, we're going to get the four and five, okay? So what we can do is I will just copy this one and paste it right here. Let me just remove those unnecessary texts. So we now have this equation number four. And then I will also get this equation number five Redo this equation number five right here. So let me just remove the unnecessary text. There you go. And then I will combine those two. It's like, you know, it's like uh, we're going to add them. So in here, we could actually add them already. 
But before that, we have to multiply uh, a certain value for us to be able to eliminate one variable. So if you want to solve for the, oops, my bad. So let me just arrange this one so that I2 and I2 is, you know, aligned with each other. And then I1 and I1 is aligned with each other. So let me put this one right here and then this one on the other side. Okay. So I2 and I2 now is aligned. I1 and I1 now is uh, also aligned. So in here, hmm, we can for a 12, 40 times 4 times 5. So we can multiply the equation number 4, okay, into times 4, times 4. And then we can also multiply the equation number 5 into times 5, okay? So we can do this one since uh, we uh, multiplied uh, everything. Okay, it's, so we didn't change anything, okay? So what we wanted to uh, uh, attain is uh, we have to uh, get a value of 200 right here and then a value of 200 also right here, okay? Ah, uh, my bad. So if you're going to add them, it will just become 400. Hmm. Why do we have same polarity or same? Minus, minus. Okay, so instead of adding, we can actually change this one into subst uh, subtraction. So it's also possible. Okay, so that uh, this one will become a positive. So 200, uh, negative 200 plus 200 will become a zero. Okay. So in here, if we are going to multiply, one, uh, multiply this one by 4, we will get 40. Okay, but I think we don't have enough time anymore. Anyway, so we will just continue this one on the part 3. So goodbye for now since we don't have enough time anymore. Yes, and sir. then let's just meet again on the part 3, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so hello again. So again, okay, before we continue our discussion, so let me just check if you guys are already ready or in front of your computer. So just give me a thumbs up. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. So most of you are already uh, here and ready. Okay, so let's now continue this one. So again, just multiply this uh, equation to four. So 10 times four will become 40. And still a negative minus I1. So four times 50 will become 200. And then still negative minus I2. And this one will become uh, 160. So 40 times 4 is 160. Okay, equal to 0. So this is now our equation number 4. Okay, so for this one, this equation number 5, just multiply this 1 at the 5. Okay, so 5 times 20 will give us 100 minus I1. So 5 times 40 is 200. Okay, minus I2. So 5 times 60 is 300 is equal to 0. So this is now our equation number 5. Okay. So are you guys able to follow so far? And how did we get uh, those equations right here? Equation number 5. Okay, just one. What about the others? Okay, great. And then we can multiply this one 
okay, into negative, or we can just simply, you know, deduct this one so that we can have 40 minus 100 will give us negative 60, and then uh, minus uh, plus minus, okay, will become positive. So uh, all in all, this will become positive I1200, so uh, this will be canceled, okay? It will give us E0. And then in here, so negative plus negative will become positive. So uh, positive 300 minus 160 is equal to positive 140. 140 is equal to 0. Okay? So we could now call this one as your equation number 6. Okay? And then in this equation number 6, we can now solve for the value of your I2 since we now have uh, only one unknown. So this one will become negative I60 plus I2 times 140 is equal to 0. Okay? So just transpose this negative on the other side. So it will give us I2 times 140 uh, is equal to 60. Okay? And then simplify this one a little bit more just by putting this one on the other side. So this one will become I2 is equal to 60 divided by 140. So using your calculator, uh, I2 is equal to 60 divided by 140. It will give us a, a result of 0 0.428. Okay, or 429 rather. You're going to uh, round uh, up the uh, 8 into uh, 9. Okay, so 429 uh, ampere. So this is now the value of our uh, I sub 2. So were you guys able to get this one? And how did we get the value of I2? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So we now have the I2. So we can now also eliminate the uh, I2 right here for us to be able to get the value of I1. So how do we do that one? So we can do the same method. So we have to uh, make this one equal to this one. So to do that, so we have to multiply the equation number 4 to 3 and then equation number 5 to uh, 2. So 2 times 6 is 120 and then 3 times 4 is 120. So for the equation, hmm, let me get this one. And then let's place it right here. Simultaneous equation. For the 4 and 5, so 4 and 5, but in here we now have to eliminate the I2 for us to be able to get the value of I1. So in here, uh, this will become times 3, and then the equation number 5 will become times 2. Okay? So doing that one, our uh, equation number 4 uh, will become 3 times 2. 10 is 30 minus I1, 50 times 3 is 150 minus uh, I2, 40 times 3 is 120 is equal to 0. Okay, so this is now our equation number 4. So just let me know if I did something wrong. Okay. And then for the second equation or the equation number 5, so just multiply this one into 2. So 20 will become 40 minus I1 times 80 minus I2 times 120 is equal to 0. This is now our equation number 5. Okay? And then we can now deduct this one for us to be able to eliminate this I2 right here. So negative 40 plus 30 is negative 10. And positive 80 uh, minus 150 is negative I1 times i times yeah times 70 okay and then this one will now be eliminated of course since negative 120 plus 120 is equal to zero and then equal to zero so now is your equation number five okay so again uh, you can now simplify this one a little bit more for you to be able to get the value of i1 so just transpose this one on the other side so i1 uh see hmm. So we can also do that one. Like, oh, wait, let's just make this one positive by one. I1 times 70 okay, is equal to 
uh, negative 10 since the one that we transpose is this uh, expression right here. And then from here, I1 will become uh, negative 10 divided by 70. So I1 is negative 0 0.7 ampere. Okay. So as you guys can see, we've got a value of negative in here. It only means that our uh, our assumption on uh, loop number two is incorrect. Okay. So our uh, loop right here should be clockwise, not counterclockwise. Okay. So we have a loop uh, clockwise and then another clockwise right here. So that's the correct uh, rotation of this uh, current right here. So in here, if you've got a result of negative 0 0.7, then uh, this one is still correct. Okay, just make this one positive and then just uh, change your polarity from uh, counterclockwise into clockwise, okay? So no need to worry if you've got a value of negative. It only means that you have an incorrect assumption of uh, loopings. Okay, so are we clear so far on how did we get the value of I2 and I1? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So going back to our first equation, equation number one. So as long as we know the value of I1 and I2, then we can now solve for the value of I3. So since we now already have the value of those I2 and I1, then we can now solve for the I3. So I1 plus I2. So I1 is negative 0 0.7, okay? Plus I2 is 0 0.429. Okay, so take note, you still have to, uh, you know, uh, get the uh, signage. Okay, do not uh, make this one positive yet. So I3 is now equal to, so negative 0 0.7 plus 0 0.429 will give us a result of negative 0 0.271. Okay, so once you've got uh, already the uh, all of the values of your currents, and that's the time that you can now change this one into positive. So I3 now is equal to 0 0.271, okay? So meaning this I3 right here is also incorrect, okay? So uh, instead of leaving, this one is actually entering. Okay, so that's the correct uh, assumption when, uh, when it comes to this uh, polarity of I3. So we have uh, I1 entering, I3 entering, and then uh, I2 leaving. So uh, that's the correct uh, assumption when it comes to those uh, currents, okay? So voila, we now have the uh, uh, result for the I3. So the correct answer for this uh, 40 ohm resistor, okay? So the current that is flowing is 0 0.271 ampere. Okay, and if we are going to compare that one with our solution, so uh, in here we have two super nodes, but uh, either of those two are just the same. Again, just like what I mentioned uh, a while ago. So at node A, uh, at node A or at node B. So it will give you this equation right here, where in the are just the same. And then we have those three loops, okay, which is the same with what we have. Okay, just uh, analyze this one again. And then in here, uh, we've replaced the uh, let's see this, where is that one? This I3. Yeah, this I3 right here into a I1 plus I2. And then got this uh, new uh, values right here or this uh, newly uh, expression. And then you can now use those expression for you to be able to get the value of I1 and I2. But in here, uh, I didn't use simultaneous equation, but uh, I did use the calculator. But of course, you can use that one just like, you know, what, uh, we did a while ago in here. This is the longer method, uh, simultaneous equation 4 and 5, simultaneous equation and 4 and 5, okay? But if you want to uh, do the short method, okay, so as long as you know the uh, final uh, equation of your uh, this one and this one, then you can now uh, use that one and then use your calculator for you to be able to get the uh, I1 and I2. So just look for the function, uh, where is that one? Look for the function. 
uh, so in my case, I'm using uh, the Casio FX991 EX. And then just by clicking the mode or setup, uh, I can find here the equation or func, F-U-N-C, okay, or function. Okay, so just go over on that one. Okay, and then uh, you'll, you'll be given a choice as we're in to give a simul equation. And then the other one is polynomial. Uh, polynomial. So just choose the uh, simul equation. And then after that, you will choose uh, how many unknowns that you have on that equation. So since we only have two unknowns, the I1 and then the I2, then I will choose two unknowns. And then it will give you this. So of course, you guys cannot see. However, I have a devil, I guess, in here. I think I wasn't able to put a demo. Okay, let's just find it on YouTube. So how to do simul simultaneous equation uh, in calculator. So of course we have you know uh, different versions of calculator. Just find for a specific version of your uh, calculator. So you can find here the 991ES or the 991EX, which uh, the one that I have. Uh, in me right now so let's go over with this one if you have this kind of calculator so for example you have this equation right here equation number one and equation number two and then you have you also have two unknowns the x and y and then x and y So just click mode and then click number five for the EQN or equation. And then we have here four, uh, you know, different uh, syntaxes. So since we only have two unknowns, we have to, uh, you have to choose the number one. ENX plus BNY is equal to CN. So this is your ENX and then this is your uh, BNY and then, then this is your CN. If you're going to choose the number two, meaning you have three unknowns, okay? The A, B, and C, all right? And then the rest are uh, another uh, format or syntax, but mostly you're only going to deal with two unknowns or three unknowns. Okay, but you can have up to four unknowns. Okay, just by choosing the uh, number four, I guess. By the way, can you guys hear what uh, is my uh, screen saying? Can you guys hear uh, anything? No, sir. Wala, wala. Okay, so I think it's right here. Hmm. Well, anyway, so just watch this one, just find it on YouTube. So how to use simultaneous equation in a calculator. So uh, after uh, clicking the number one, it will give you this one. So just click the value of your, uh, the, the, the first value, which is three. So three and then equals. And then the second one is negative two. So you have to neg negate that one also. Negative two and then equals. Okay, and then the last one is positive six. So six and then equal. Okay, so do the same on the second equation. So five equal, and then it will give you to the, uh, it will lead you to the second expression, which is the letter B. So positive six equal. And then the last one is uh, 38 and then equal. Then after that, then after that, if you're going to press equal, it will give you the values of your X and Y. So in here, the, the solve value from the calculator, X is equal to four and then Y is equal to three, okay? So I would like you guys to do this one also because this is the uh, faster method, actually the fastest method, okay? By using the uh, calculator, okay? As long as you have the correct equation, of course, then you'll be able to get the value of those unknowns, the I1 and then I2 right away, okay? So I will leave uh, this part to you guys since I, I'm, I'm not sure which calculator you're using. So you guys have different versions of calculator. So you're the one who's responsible to uh, find a specific 
uh, tutorial on how to you know uh, use the uh, equation on that calculator of yours. Okay, and then after that, you will get this results right here. Okay, so we have here the uh, I1, which is negative 0 0.143. Let's compare it. Oops. And then the other one is 0 0.429. 0 0.429. And why did we get a different result in here? Negative 0 0.143. Hmm. But we've got the, uh, the correct answer, which is 0 0.271 or the 0 0.28. Just has a little variation. Okay, 0 0.286. So I think uh, the assumption right here, or the uh, you know the polarity of uh, the one that they've used, is the uh, entering part or the entering uh, symbol, which is the negative, and then this one will become positive, and then this one will become positive again. So negative, positive, positive. Um, either of those two, so you will get uh, the same correct answer, okay, which is zero point two eight six. So since we have two different results wherein I've got negative 0 0.7 and then the other one is uh, the same, which is 0 0.429. Okay, so I would like you guys to uh, recheck, okay, uh, what differs with my uh, solution right here and then my solution right here right now, okay. Well, anyway, since we don't have enough time anymore and then, you know, we cannot uh, go back in here and then analyze everything again. So I will leave this one to you guys. And then if you want to get the uh, voltage drop across RT, then just get the uh, the value of that I3, which is 0 0.286, and then the resistor on that I3, which is uh, 40 ohms. And then you will get 11.40 per volts, okay? So yeah, that's it for the uh, example number one. So any questions so far? Answer. Okay. So I hope the others were at least able to get 50% of the, you know, idea or the process and how did we get the 0 0.286 right here. Anyway, so that's it for the uh, equation number, I mean, example number one. So here's just uh, a more explanation on how you uh, execute the process of Curie Chop's uh, circuit law. So the first one is, uh, you know, uh, the most common thing that uh, we do, but uh, either of those step one or, or step two, so uh, you can uh, interchange those two, okay, as long as you have already mastered uh, the things that you guys need to do, especially in solving the uh, Kirchhoff's uh, circuit law, okay, or Kirchhoff circuit uh, diagram. So in here, you just assume all voltages and resistance are given. If not, label them V1, V2, R1, and R2. But in our case, it's already given, so we don't need to do that one, okay? So that is why we have already jumped onto the uh, number two, okay? But in here, it's also already given, the clockwise or the anti-clockwise. Uh, anti so step one and number two is already uh, done. And then step number three, so label each branch with a branch current. So in here, it's also done, which is the I1, uh, I2, and I3. So they are already uh, labeled. And then the things that we did, uh, now, which doesn't exist uh, in here, okay, is the uh, KCL, which is now uh, step number four. And then after KCL, it's now the KVL, okay? And then after finding the uh, equations, equation number uh, one, two, three, and four, or how many equations is that, uh, you can now try to eliminate uh, some equations by uh, uh, using the simultaneous equations. Okay, to solve the unknown uh, variables. Okay, so yeah, you can uh, do any of uh, this one right here. So the important process right here, you have to do the KCL first before the KVL. Well, actually you can do also KVL first before the KCL. So there is no, uh, you know, uh, absolute, uh, process or step when it comes to solving a cure job circuit law. Okay, as long as you know what you're doing, you can do uh, any step uh, right here first. Well, except the 
step number six. You cannot do a linear simultaneous equation if you don't have the given equations. Okay, so that's why you have to do the uh, there's first five steps before you can uh, do the step number six. All right, so that's it for the uh, process. So here's uh, more explanation when it comes to uh, using Kirchhoff's uh, circuit law. So uh, again, we have this uh, law right here is uh, for us to be able to calculate the various voltages and currents strict, uh, circulating around a linear circuit. So we can also use loop analysis to calculate the currents in each independent loop, which helps to reduce the uh, amount of mathematics required by using Kirchhoff's laws. Okay, so this one is super similar also with uh, the Ohm's law. So whatever you can do in Ohm's law, you can also do that one on the uh, Kirchhoff circuit law. So you can find the uh, individual voltage drop, individual uh, uh, current, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, just a different uh, method. So the same with this one. So I will skip this one since this is just a, uh, another explanation how to use or how to apply KVL or KCL on a a complicated circuit. So let's have this uh, second example now. So uh, in here, where is that question? Okay, but the question right here is we have to find the individual voltage drops, okay, and then the individual currents at the same time, I1, I2, I3, I4, and then I5, okay? So if you guys are going to take a look at this one, we can easily combine this one using uh, the parallel uh, circuit law, the same with this one, the parallel circuit law. And after that, you will have a single series uh, path or single series uh, circuit diagram. Then after that, you can now find the I total. Okay. So that's uh, the way wherein uh, for you to be able to uh, verify uh, what is the value of your I total. You can also uh, apply the uh, KCL right here. Okay. So if you guys are going to take a look on this one, you can apply it on this part or on this part, okay? So we have I1 and I2 entering, okay? And then IT, uh, which is leaving. So of course, I1 plus I2 is equal to IT. So the same with this one uh, on the right side. So we have IT entering on this node right here, and then we have I3, I4, and then I5 leaving. So if you're going to analyze this one, uh, also we have uh, IT as your positive and then I3, I4, I5 as your negative. So of course, if you're going to divide this one into three, it is still the same if you're going to add those three individual currents right here, okay? So those are the ways. But in here, what we simply did is we combine these two and these three into uh, uh, one uh, value, okay? So this is the computation for the RAC, and then this is the computation for the RCF. So after that, we can now get the uh, total resistance. So 1 plus uh, 10. Okay, so that's your uh, total uh, resistance. So that is why we have RT is equal to 11 right here. And then for the uh, VT, we have 132 volts, which is the original uh, voltage source right here. So uh, since we are getting the I total, so we have to get the total. Uh, values of your voltage and then R total. So 132 divided by 11, you'll get 12 ampere. Okay, so that is now the value of your uh, IT right here. So after that, uh, you can now have this one, of course, after uh, simplifying or getting these values right here. So we have I total 12 ohms. The first one is one, um, uh, one ohm. Second one is uh, 10 ohm, okay? And then after that, you can now solve for the individual uh, voltages, okay? So uh, in here, in the RAC, of course, we only have one uh, voltage that is flowing since they are in a uh, uh, parallel connection before. The same with the RCF, those three uh, branch, we now have uh, a single uh, uh, voltage value. So that is why if you guys are going to take a look on this one, I1 and I2, we have the same numerator. So that is the voltage that is flowing on the uh, uh, I1 and I2. And then for the I3 up to I5, uh, we also have uh, a single uh, value for voltage since they are in parallel. So now, how did we get those 12 right here and then 120 right here? So this one came from uh, this uh, circuit right here. So uh, remember, 
how to get the oops how to get the individual a voltage so for us to be able to get the individual voltage so we have to use this formula v1 is equal to i1 times r1 okay so i1 is equal to your id since we now have a series connection which is 12 12 amps r1 is 1 ohm so v1 now is equal to 12 volts okay so this is now the value of your uh, rac or v1 and then v2 okay so that is why uh, we have the same value of your i1 and i2 for the voltage uh, across them so v1 is 12 volts and then v2 is also 12 volts so that's it for this uh, part right here okay and then for this part so the same uh, concept so we have uh, v2 let's say this is your uh, second uh, voltage drop is equal to uh, i2 times uh, r2 okay let's just say that this rcf is your r2 so i2 is still 12 amps okay since again we have a series connection so all of your uh, values of your currents are uh, the same so v2 why is it lagging v2 so i2 is 12 and r2 is 10 okay so v2 is now equal to 120 volts okay so this one is also the same with uh, my bad so let's just make this one v3 okay and then this one is r3 v3 so this one is equal to your v4 and then v5 since we have three uh, branches on that one okay so your v1 v2 v3 v4 and then v5 okay so uh 12 volts for the uh, v1 and v2 and then 120 volts for the v3 v4 and then v5 and then just substitute that one using these formulas right here and then you will get those individual uh currents so 12 divided by 2.4 which is the r1 you'll get 5 amp and so on and so forth okay and then using the uh kcl for you to be able to verify if your uh, results right here are really correct or no so you can have this one okay so i total is equal to i1 plus i2 which is this one or you can have the i total is equal to i3 plus i4 plus i5 which will be coming from here okay so i1 plus i2 5 plus 7 so it's equal to 12 so that's uh actually correct for the values of i1 and i2 how about the i3 and i4 and i5 so 2 plus 6 plus 4 is also equal to 12 so with that uh, you have already verified that your values of your i3 i4 and i5 and then i1 and i2 is actually correct okay just by using uh, the ohm's law in here and then this one is with the use of uh, the kcl okay so are we clear so far were you guys able to follow What about the others? Okay, 80%. Okay, so you might uh, get somehow lost, okay, especially if I didn't show everything. Well, anyway, you know, as uh, soon as you're going to review this one, you'll be able to understand everything, hopefully. Okay, just by reading uh, everything in detail. Okay, this one, explanation, explanation, and then this circuit right here, and then those uh, ex more explanations, and then the, um, you know, uh, computed values, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, how to check it using KCL, and then more explanations, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but anyway, that's it for the uh, example number two. So let's now move on to example number three since we don't have enough time anymore. So in here, find the currents flowing around the uh, following uh, circuit using Kirchhoff's current law only. So take note, we only have to use KCL, okay? So we can actually use Ohm's law right away right here just by combining those two using the parallel uh, law or parallel uh, rule uh, circuit. But since we res are restricted to that one, so we have to show uh, the uh, Kirchhoff's current law, okay? But before... Uh, 
we can do that, we have to apply KVL also at the same time. Okay. So let me just get this one. Okay. So in applying a KCL, so that's super simple. So we can actually find uh, the KCL equation right here since we have uh, entering and then two leaving. Okay. So just uh, uh, find the node wherein there is a current that is entering and then uh, a current that is uh, leaving at the same time. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the way for you to be able to uh, uh, know where to uh, start doing your KCL equation. So KCL at node B. Okay, so in here we have I1 is positive minus I2 since they are, uh, this one is living. And then the same with I3 since that is also living. So if you're going to simplify this one a little bit more, it will give us I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So this is now our equation number one. Okay. So clear so far on how did we get this uh, equation number one? I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Okay. So super simple. The next one after KCL is now, of course, the KVL. So we can have a loop right here inside. Let's call this one loop number one or loop on the outer side. Okay, let's call this one loop number two. So let's start with KVL at loop number one first. Loop number one. So in here we have, uh, of course, this one is negative positive and then this one is positive. Positive, negative, positive, negative, and then positive, negative. So loop number one, so we have positive 12 volts. Going here, going here, we have negative. Okay, I1 times R1. Negative I1. So R1 is 4. I'll put here the value already so that we can have a lesser, uh, you know, uh, equation. And then in here, going here to here. So we now have negative I3 times R3, which is 12 ohms. And then going back to our voltage source is now equal to zero. Okay. So that is now the KVL at loop one. So we cannot simplify this one uh, any further since there is no similar uh, units. Equation, but it's that. EQN number two, okay? So, uh, did you guys get on how did we, uh, you know, do the equation number two? Are we clear so far? Okay. It's one, two. Okay, so this is just the equation, I mean, KVL at loop number one. But how about the KVL at loop number two? KVL, why is it lagging at loop number two? Okay, let me just encircle this one for consistency. So in here, we're still going to use this one, and then we're still going to pass through this R1, but we are now going to pass through the R2 and then going back right here. Okay, so that's what will happen for the uh, loop number two. So we still have positive 12 volts minus I2. Ah, sorry, I1 first. I1 right here times uh, R1, which is four. And then going at, uh, right here, we now have minus I2 times six ohms. And then going back to our uh, original voltage source, it is now equal to zero, okay? So we now have equation number one, equation number two, and then equation number three. So did you guys get this one so far? And how did we get the equation number three? Okay. So from here, again, you can now uh, use this one to replace the value, I mean the variables on the uh, equation number two and then equation number three for you to be able to get the uh, I2 and I3 variables only. Okay. Ah, sorry. It is not the uh, I3 uh, right now, but it is the I1 that you have to replace. 
okay, for you to be able to get the I2 and I3 on the equation number two, and then I2 and I3 on the equation number three, okay? Okay. All right. So let's now continue uh, this uh, solution of ours in example number three. So let me just check if you guys are already in front of your computer. So just give me a thumbs up. Okay, great. So as you guys can see, after forming these um, equations right here, so it is now completely to you which uh, process you're going to use. Is it simultaneous equation or uh, via calculator? So I drop those two, it will give you the same answer as long as you have the correct, uh, you know, uh, solution or correct uh, expression or equation. So in here, I will not solve this one anymore since we don't have that much time anymore. And we are still at slide 29 and then we still have more slides. So uh, I, I think uh, we cannot uh, finish the uh, second, I mean the third module already. Ah, the, two, uh, the fourth module rather since this is, uh, ah, sorry, this is the module number one and two. Ah, my bad. This one was supposed to be module number three. Yeah, that's correct. But why is it module number two? Why is the name of my... Anyway, this one is module three, okay? And then the next one is module four. So for the third example, where is that one? So you will get this equation right here for the uh, A, B, C, the outer uh, loop. And then for the A, B, D, you will get this one. So let's compare if they are the same. So equation number one, okay, which is this one, so 12 minus 4I1 minus 12I3, uh, which is correct. And then for the second equation, the outer part, so we have here 12, okay, which is already transposed on the other side. And we have here negative I1, 4, which is correct, and then negative I2, and then 6, okay? This one is just uh, already transposed on the other side. So that's the reason why uh, this one is already positive, okay? Uh, but anyway, so uh, we have these equations right here. And then here is the... Uh, you know, simplified version of that one uh, using or with uh, having those uh, uh, values. And then after that, you can now uh, apply two simultaneous equations, okay? So in here, uh, I, I did show the uh, solution for the two simultaneous equation. So I did multiply the uh, this equation number one to, to four and then this one into uh, by one. So I didn't uh, do anything. So why did I do that one? For me to be able to uh, eliminate the I sub three. So after eliminating the I sub three, then you can now have one unknown uh, only, which is the uh, I sub two. So after that, you can now uh, find the value of uh, I sub two, which is one ampere or one amp, okay? So after getting the value for I sub two, can actually substitute this one, okay, either of those equations. So this is another way for you to be able to get the value of your I sub 3, okay? With that, you'll be able to get the uh, value of your, uh, where is that one? Of your I sub 3, right here, I sub 3, which is 0 0.5 ohms. But then here, I just, uh, you know, I, I became consistent wherein I did apply again another simultaneous equation. So I did multiply the first equation by 4, and then the second uh, equation by 10. So uh, with that, you will get the same value for your I sub 2. So that uh, you can now eliminate uh, this one and then uh, will give you one unknown variable only, which is I3. And then simplify this one a little bit more and then you will get the value of I3 as equal to uh, 0 0.5 amp. Okay, and after that, you can now use the value of I2 and I3 to get the value of I1. 
So 1 plus 0 0.5 will give you a 1.5 ampere. Okay? So you can verify this one using uh, Ohm's law, of course. Okay? So try to combine this one using parallel uh, law and then get the total current. And try to compare if you will get the, uh, the same value, which is 1.5 uh, amps right here. Okay, so were you guys able to get the concept so far and how to solve the uh, example number three? Okay, so I, I didn't ask if you guys were able to get on how did you get those equations. That's because, of course, we didn't do those anymore, okay? So I will leave this one as your... Uh, self-study uh, uh, exercises. So that's the reason why I, I only uh, ask you guys if you guys were able to get the concept. Okay, that's the important thing and how to, uh, you know, solve a certain uh, circuit and uh, you're going to apply to your job uh, law. Okay, well, anyway, just uh, go here again later on after, after this discussion. Okay, just read everything again and then uh, try to do that one on your own. So that's why this one is very big. I highly recommend you guys to redo this one using an actual paper. Okay. And if ever that you cannot under, still not understand, uh, you know, anything. So feel free to message me so that I can give you more advice and then I can give you more uh, reference maybe on how to uh, solve uh, using a uh lock. Okay, so that's it for this uh, example right here. So this is just another concept, okay? So we have loop number here. Uh, of course, we only have loop one since this is a uh, one closed loop, okay? But uh, more explanation when it comes to summation of voltage, just equal that one to zero. So uh, I will leave the reading part to you guys the same with this one. So Vs plus minus I. So this is just basically the... Uh, voltage or the KVL law, okay? So with this equation, so it's negative since this is a voltage drop, okay? And then by transposing those two on the right side, you will get this uh, new equation right here, okay? And then since they are in series, so we have a uh, one value of current only. So you can also do this one right here, okay? So put the I on the outer side and then multiply that one on R1 plus R2. So after combining those R1 and R2, you will realize that it's actually the R total already. So you can also do this one right here, I times R total, where in R total is R1 plus R2, okay? And then in here, you can also do this one using uh, this I is equal to V divided by R, okay? So V divided by R total, which is R1 plus R2. So if you want to get the individual voltage of R1, so it's VR1 is equal to I times R1, Okay, so initially we only have I, which is the Vs divided by RT, or this Vs divided by R1 plus R2. So we can use that one to replace this I right here. So Vs, which is this one, times R1, which is now this R1 right here, divided by R1 plus R2, which is now the R1 plus R2 right here. Okay, so it's just a matter of uh, manipulating, okay, your uh, equations right here using Ohm's law, okay, Etc. Etc. And then, if you want to get the VR2, then you can also do this one. Okay, so the only one that differs is the numerator. Okay, so let's have an example using this uh, uh, diagram right here. So we have, uh, ah, my bad. This one is two resistors only, but this one is three resistors. Anyway, so let's do this one using the paint. So we have here a uh, voltage source of 12 volts. And then the first one is 10 ohm. Second one is 20 ohm. The third one is 30 ohm. So again, sorry for my uh, uh, ugly handwritten. Anyway, that's the uh, circuit for this one. And then calculate the total resistance, the circuit current, uh, the current through each uh, resistor, the voltage drop across each resistor, and then verify that one using Kirchhoff's law. Okay, 
So here's the solution explanation. So of course, just by adding everything, 10 plus 20 plus 30, you will get the R total, which is 60 ohms. And then for the uh, total current, of course, uh, we already have the total voltage and then the total resistance, and you can already use that one. So I is equal to 12 divided by 60 will give you 0 0.2 amps or 0, uh, 200 milliamp. Okay, so those two are just the same. Okay, so that's it for the A and B. And then for the letter C, so we can already uh, solve for the individual uh, currents just by saying that I total is equal to IR1, IR2, and then IR3 since they are in series. So you only have one single uh, value for the uh, current. The same with the voltage uh, drop. Since, uh, you know, they are in one connection only, so you have the same uh, current, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. The only one that differs is their individual resistor. So that will determine uh, how much voltage drop it will consume. So for the R1, it will give you a voltage drop of 2 volts. For the I2, it will give you a voltage drop of 4 volts. For the uh, R3, it will give you a voltage drop of uh, 6 volts. Okay. So yeah, that's basically it on how to solve uh, this uh, example number four. So did you guys get the idea or the concept? Okay, what about the others? So please type also how many percent, you know, uh, just a little, sir, you know, uh, any feedback will do. Okay, as long as you have a feedback, that's already uh, a big deal to me. That only means that you are uh, really re uh, listening, okay? Like, uh, you know, unlike the others, so I'm not really sure if they are uh, uh, in front of their computers right now listening to me. Anyway. So I'm glad that there are still uh, at least two or three who are, you know, uh, how do you call that one? Masipag, mm, uh, okay, or uh, dedicated, yeah, still dedicated uh, in learning uh, this topic, okay? All right, so more solution explanation, etc., etc., or how to verify this one using Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, so we just simply did a one loop, of course, the original voltage source, and then three uh, voltage drops, and then uh, those uh, given values, and then the result, and then 12 minus 2 minus 4 minus 6 is equal to zero. So if this one is equal to zero, meaning those values of yours are correct, or those uh, process of yours that you did in here are actually correct, okay? And then here's the, uh, you know, labeled, uh, I mean, diagram, okay? So the voltage source, uh, the current that is flowing, and then the voltage drop, okay, or the voltage across. So maybe you guys are wondering on what is the difference between the voltage drop, voltage versus voltage across, okay? So, well, actually, they are just the same. So voltage drop is, you know, the uh, voltage that uh, this component uh, accumulated, okay? The same with the voltage across. So this one is much more straightforward since uh, the voltage uh, across through this uh, transistor is two volts. And this one is four volts, and then this one is uh, six volts. So if you're hearing, uh, let's say, alternating words when it comes to voltage drop and then voltage across, you are just actually the same, okay? So just to avoid confusion when it comes to those uh, terminologies, drop and then across, okay? And then here's, uh, I think, theory behind blah, 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 blah. So just uh, a summary, okay, about uh, Kirchhoff's law, okay? So here's the reference uh, uh, as usual. Ah, my bad. This one didn't came from All About Circuit, but this one now came from all uh, electronics uh, tutorials. Okay, so just visit this one if you want to see the uh, complete uh, version of my uh, examples right here. 
So yeah, that's it for the module two. So what we'll do next meeting is if you guys are willing, okay, if you guys are willing, we can actually have up to part five because I'm not really sure if we can finish uh, three modules next meeting. But supposedly, you know, we'll be able to finish the module three and four uh, today, but I don't know what happened. We are too slow uh, right now. So yeah, uh, basically the, the, the uh, uh, main concept of uh, Maxwell, 80% of it came from the Kirchhoff's law. So that's the reason why, uh, you know, uh, after learning the Kirchhoff's law, you will be easily uh, understand the Maxwell as long as you, you were able to understand the uh, Kirchhoff's law. Okay, so I highly suggest you guys to, uh, you know, master first the Kirchhoff's law before jumping in and then start learning about uh, Maxwell. Though I, you know, uh, I, I, uh, I'm making sure that you know, once you've learned the Kirchhoff's law, everything now is super easy in Maxwell. Why? Because, uh, you know, using Maxwell instead of Kirchhoff's is a lot easier. Okay. Well, we'll uh, discuss that one next meeting. So you will uh, know next meeting what are your differences. Okay, but 80 to 90%, they are just the same. Okay. Same concept. So yeah, that's it for today. So since we are already done with the uh, module three, then I, I guess you can now um, start uh, practicing, you know, especially this one, this one, two, and three for the active jobs. Okay, then if you want, you can also visit these three practice exercises and then have an advanced study with the module four. So that's also okay. That's actually perfect for me so that once we have uh, the uh, meeting, next meeting, uh, you already have an idea how to apply the uh, Maxwell. Okay, and if you want, you can also start answering the Kirchhoff's law quiz. So this is 110 points. So the due date is July 5. So don't you guys worry, you guys have plenty of time. You guys have one week, you know, before uh, 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 end up and uh, lose time uh, before you can take this one. So as early as of now, I would like you guys to do a lot of practice, especially in Kirchhoff's Law, okay? Because this one is 110 points. So after you're done in analyzing this one, then you can now start analyzing the Maxwell. And you can also start answering this one if you want. Okay, so it is completely up to you since this one is already open. However, you will only have one uh, attempt, of course. So uh, having a second attempt is not uh, allowed, of course. So whatever is your score on that first attempt, then that's already it. We cannot do anything about it anymore. Since, you know, giving you a second attempt is considered as cheating already. Okay. And do not also forget to answer the case study number two. Right, so just read the facts and then the question and then just share your uh, opinion with that. Okay, so I guess that's already it for today. So do you guys have a question so far or a clarification? Okay, so, so sorry. Uh, it took us longer than I uh, expected. Anyway, so just continue the uh, module for next meeting. Okay, so if you guys don't have a question anymore, then you guys may now go and then let's just meet again next meeting. Okay. So goodbye and uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, too. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you sir. Goodbye, Paul. Thank you and goodbye too. Thank you, Paul. Welcome.